Welcome to this tutorial series on NFTX version two. Uh, in this one, we're gonna look at creating vaults. So if you are looking to create a vault, first go over to the explore section and have a look at the vaults that exist. You don't wanna create a vault uh, for NFTs that already have a vault created. So if you're sure that you haven't, uh, that one doesn't already exist, then you can come across to the create section here. Uh, there's three pieces of information that we need to start off with. First of all is the NFT asset address. Um, for that, we're going to create a uh, vault for these Genbit bunnies. Um, you can find the address by going to uh, OpenSea, find a NFT that you're looking for, um, and then down the bottom here in the details, you can grab the contract address from here. Uh, which will open up Etherscan here so we can copy that contract address. Uh, so we put the contract address for the NFT asset in here and then we want to give the vault a name. And just a thing to point out as well here, if you put the wrong address in, uh, or when you put the right address in, you can see a little icon of that particular token. So it gives you an indication as to whether or not you've got the right one. Uh, the next one we've got here is our vault name is going to be uh, Genbit Bunnies. And we're going to call this one Bunny. Uh, try and keep your vault symbols down to uh, six characters or less because you're able to see the ticker in um, on Twitter when people are sharing the dollar sign and the name of your vault symbol as well. Uh, keep uh, any dashes out of it as well and yeah keep it as simple as possible so once we have this uh, we can click on review so our token standards ERC 721 vault name Gembit bunnies and our symbol is going to be bunny if you're happy with that you can create the vault if you're unhappy with that you can click on edit and come back and make any changes that you would like to make once you've made these and you've created this there's no going back the vault will exist so we click on create vault and we have to pay a little bit of gas and confirm. The vault has been created and that transaction has gone through. We can come in to manage our vault. First thing we'll see is that we have a warning to say that there's no NFTs in the vault at the moment. And before you can publish a vault, you need to be able to put NFTs in there. Uh, this is to stop people from just creating lots of vaults uh, that are empty. Um, so it's always good to have a few NFTs to seed the vault to start with. There's a few options down here as well. Looking here, we've got the vault address, which has just been created now. Um, you can also uh, enable or disable minting. You can enable random redeems or you can enable targeted redeems. You can switch these off as well. Uh, so this is where you have the control. Um, you may want to use your vault as a way to distribute uh, NFTs, so you could create a vault, mint a whole bunch of NFTs to it, disable the minting so no one can put any more in there, uh, and enable random redeems and then distribute the tokens out as you see fit as well. We also have enabled target redeems, which means that people can choose the uh, NFT that they want from the vault. We're going to keep all of these checked because this is what we want. Uh, in the fees section, uh, these will all default. So at the moment, the mint fee is 1%. So when someone puts an NFT into the vault, they will get 0.99 tokens back. That 1% fee is then distributed to all the liquidity providers for that particular vault. At Go Live, the liquidity providers won't be uh, given anything until the migration has happened, until all of the uh, liquidity has been moved from V1 across to V2, uh, but that will happen as part of the uh, migration process. There's also the opportunity uh, to uh, do a redeem fee, uh, which is defaulted to 0%. Uh, that is for random redeems. We want to keep that at zero. And then you have a targeted redeem fee of 5% as well. So this means that you need 1.05 tokens to choose an NFT from the vault to redeem. And again, with that 5% going back and providing uh, uh, fees for the liquidity providers. If you want to edit any of these, you can click on edit. We recommend you keep them at this way. Um, it seems to be the best way. We don't want to... Uh, 
make any changes there. For eligibilities, this is if you have a requirement for eligibilities on your NFT. Um, the list module will allow you to drop in a comma separated list of NFT IDs that you want to limit the uh, vault for. Uh, once it has been set, you cannot make a change on that. So be careful with that one. With the range module, this works perfectly once you have uh, something for something like art blocks. Art blocks have a very specific range. So for all of the singularities, they all um, start with a particular ID uh, and end with a particular ID. So for example, if we were to look at the art blocks project, we come through, if we looked at, uh, let's look at algorithms. We have project, uh, it's project 64 and there is 1000 of them minted. So I know that if we come in and look at uh, a very specific uh, one here, we can see this is uh, number 64, uh, which is project 64. And this is the very first one. And I know that this will go up to 999, which is the last mint of them. Uh, if we were to go to 1000, uh, that wouldn't actually exist. So I know that 999 is the last. So if we were doing a vault for art blocks, we could do a range. So we would want the first one to be 64 uh, and all zeros and the last one to this. And this would only allow art blocks to come in that were part of the algorithms uh, set. Uh, for gen bits, though, we're not going to limit this to anything. We're going to leave this the same eligibilities. We don't want el any eligibilities. It is a floor vault. Anything can come in. Um, in the danger zone, you can change the owner of the vault manager who will then have the ability to come in and change the fees. So everything is pretty uh, simple from what we're looking at here. I don't want to update any of these features, so we just need to deposit some NFTs into there. So if I come across, we can see these are the gen bits uh, that I'm looking at. Probably go in there as well. Uh, but we have those. Now look, we've got the minting fee of 1%. Um, we're going to approve this. Now as uh, an initial, uh, when you initially mint in, because you're seeding the vault, you may want to, if you're going to be providing uh, liquidity for it, you may want to waive the 1% uh, fee initially and then go back and change it. It's up to you. This is a permissionless system, um, but we would leave it uh, by default. In a uh, soon to be feature release, uh, you will be able to mint uh, NFTs into the vaults and avoid that 1% fee if you also want to provide liquidity. So if you're a liquidity provider, you will be waived that 1% fee and go straight into adding your liquidity in there with a whole token instead. Once I've chosen the ones that I'm after, I can then approve. We have this uh, warning here that the unpublished vault is, is uh, insecure, but that's just because we've created it. So I'm going to approve the minting of these. Now, first you need to approve the minting, and once it's been approved, then you can mint into the vault itself. Before we mint those bunnies in, I just want to go back to the point of when you are minting in for the very first time after creating a vault, uh, what will be, uh, what's going to come in V2, in V2.1 will be the ability to bypass paying the minting fee if you're going to be providing liquidity for the NFTs that you're putting in. Again, so you put NFTs in, you get your token back, you provide liquidity with that token um, paired with ETH. Uh, we don't want to charge you for that. That's a good thing. Um, while that isn't uh, that doesn't exist, if you are setting up a vault uh, and you are going to deposit NFTs into that vault, I would recommend coming into the fees, editing the fees, and dropping the mint fee down to zero percent while you're setting up the vault. So if we set the fees on this, okay, now that has been uh, set, we're going to come in and deposit our NFTs. Now we already have chosen a few of them previously. So the ones that we don't want to bring in is 92 and 160. 
So we choose those ones and you can see now that we have updated the minting fee to 0%, uh, we're gonna get our full four bunnies back after we mint in. So we hit mint, we have to pay a bit of gas on this one again and we confirm and we can put those bunnies in. Okay, now that that has uh, finished, we can now we now have our tokens. So, uh, or when we refresh, we'll have our tokens appear there, but we can now add bunny to our wallet. So if we click on add bunny to our wallet, it will ask us if we want to add that token into our MetaMask wallet. So we can say add, and that's dropped in there now. Uh, now that we have done that, we can come back to manage and we can come into our vault. So now that we have uh, minted our first set in there, what, uh, what you can do now is publish the vault. Now, if we go ahead and publish this vault with the 0% mint fee set to encourage people to deposit, uh, like I said before, if you deposit um, and provide liquidity, we're gonna bypass that mint fee. If you decide to publish it with 0% and you want to come back and change the fees at a later date, even as the vault owner, you need to go through the DAO to change the fees. Once you have published the vault, you will not have control to be able to change the fees. So with that in mind, uh, if you were creating it, uh, we would want to set the fees to the way you want the vault to run long term. So we've seeded this with a few bunnies. I'm going to use those bunnies as liquidity. So we're going to move the mint fee back to 1%. Again, you can change the percentages, but it does need to go through a vote in the DAO, um, which can take a couple of days or at least 24 hours and then those fees can be changed again. So before you publish, make sure you have your mint and redeem and target redeem set up and that your eligibilities are set. All right, so that has been successful. If we give this uh, a refresh and have a look at our fees, we have our 1% fees back in there. I can now click on publish the vault and we have 1% fee, 0% random redeem, and 5% target redeem, and I can publish the vault. Publishing the vault takes a little bit more gas, confirm that, and then once that has been finished, that will be displayed on the front end for anyone to be able to see and anyone to be able to mint their Genbit NFTs in there. There we have our vault has been published and we have our vault details here at the end. So we have our vault URL, which allows you to go um, share that URL. Um, then these are the details of the vault. So this is pretty much the same kind of screens you can see there. Uh, this is our vault token address. This is the NFT address. And these are the holdings. So they're the four bunnies that we minted in before. Uh, for fees, we don't have any fees sitting in there at the moment because we minted them in without any fees enabled on the mints. But anyone that mints thing, uh, bunnies in there from now on, fees will be accumulating as well. So that's that there. We can uh, click on mint into vaults if we wanted to. We can come across here and we can see our Genbit bunnies. Uh, you'll notice that the icon here defaults to the NFTX icon. Once you've created a vault, uh, you can notify the NFTX team through the Discord channel and we'll get a trendy icon set up for you. If you want your own style icon, you can uh, send that through as a request as well. So that is setting up and managing our vaults. You can see if we come back here, if we refresh this, you can see that we've got our visibility in here now. Um, I can go and create a vault, but I don't have a manage anymore because we've sort of given up ownership of that now that we have approved the vault to be created. Uh, you can go and create as many vaults as you want by going back through that process again. If you do have any questions, you can reach out to us on Discord or check out the documentation where we'll have details, uh, written down details about everything that we've gone through so far.